Welcome to the big show. He could go all the way. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the main event. Let's get ready to rumble. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. And from high atop the ridge on Rockefeller Road, it's a beautiful night for high school football. As tonight, your Wicklow Blue Devils are its homecoming here in the year of 2021. As the Wicklow Blue Devils tonight are hosting the Longhorns of Lutheran West High School. Hello again, everybody. My name is Frank Fody from the class of 1974. And to my left here is my brother from another mother, mm. Mr. Mark Tennant. Mark, how are you doing tonight? Franklin, it's, we're here, back up on the ridge. Uh, disappointing that we didn't have a game last week, but we're ready to go. And as well, later tonight, we'll have our uh, Tony Throckmorton who will be joining us here in the second half as we're all 
kind of sharing the duties here on our worldwide Blue Devil Network webcast, which is made possible from the Wycliffe Schools Alumni Association. Hello again, everybody. As uh, tonight, as I mentioned, Lutheran West is here. The Longhorns are coming in here. Mark, I think they're coming in here with a four win and one loss Correct. record. Yep, one loss, and that was to the Kirtland Hornets uh, right. in week two. Um, which, by the way, we'll talk about that game here in just a little bit, which was uh, really, really a building block, if you will, for this Longhorn team uh, for Coach Perella, and we'll talk about that and hear from him in just a little bit. And uh, the Blue Devils did not play last week. They were supposed to get on the bus and travel over to uh, Brooklyn, but uh, some some nastiness by way of COVID got in the way and the game got postponed or actually canceled. So the Devils tonight are coming in here with a record of one win, three losses. Actually, it was two weeks ago tonight when uh, we were here and we had some guests in here from Akron and they kind of put it to Wycliffe. And uh, we'll see if the Devils can't turn that around tonight. Strangely enough, about last week, and I found this out this week, that, um, you know, the, the COVID thing was on our side. However, it was all contact. Everybody tested positive. Everybody did everything right as far as the, you know, the Ohio High School uh, Sports Association, uh, their directive to, to COVID. Um, but the superintendent of the Brooklyn school system is the one who called it off. And strangely enough, they had a game lined up against Beachwood last week. And that was already done before they had called off this game. So really? I'm, I'm calling them out because they know what they did. And they know we were good. And uh, so it was It was what it was. But, um, yeah, I heard about that this week, and I, I just wanted to put it out there because um, that's the truth. <laughs> and I know that we were good last week, um, but the Brooklyn school superintendent said nope, and they already had a game scheduled with the Beachwood Bison. So that's kind of what happened with that. You know, it's too bad there's drama everywhere. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, uh, you know, but the prior week, you know, when we had the game with Fairport that didn't go off, you know, the gang down in Akron, they were willing to get on a bus and probably what, spend an hour to come up here. And, uh, um, you know, we'll, um, that worked out. But, you know. Well, not for us it didn't. <laughs> yeah, well, I know. I realized on the score it didn't. But football was able to be played. Right, right. So, but tonight, ladies and gentlemen, it is homecoming. Uh, well, I think. Again, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our homecoming as uh, you can hear in the background, PA announcer Scott Tennant doing Yeoman's duties this evening. I just listened to Scott about it. Homecoming always a special event. Usually brings a lot of alumni back. Giovanni Hernandez. Gio is escorted by Olivia Petrintosi and Christopher and Jeffy Fortuna. He is a member of the cross country and indoor and outdoor track and field team. Has run a 19 and a half minute 5K, holds a 4.2 grade point average, and he can install a Rubik's Should Finally, also mention. Oh. High Grand is Ryan Ryan is escorted by Kylie Rubin. He is a member of the boys' soccer, basketball, and tennis team, as well as the. 
which was swing band and choir. After graduation, Ryan plans to attend a four-year college. The 2021 Winslow High School Homecoming Grand Marshal, Ryan Murphy. And congratulations there to Brian Murphy, who is the Grand Marshal. Gentlemen, let's hear it for all four of our Grand Marshal candidates. Mark, now I know what it's like to, you know, do play-by-play -play for the Macy's Homecoming. Now, I'm sorry, uh, Thanksgiving. Right, the Macy's Homecoming Parade. Yeah. That's right, the Macy's Homecoming Parade. <laughs> on Thanksgiving. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's escorted by Hope Field. April and Mike Bernardinetti. She is a competitive dancer in which she has won multiple dance awards. She also serves as president of the choir and is a member of the National Honor Society. Mia plans on attending Baldwin Wallace University to major in accounting and where she also plans to continue her passion for dance and theater. That's Mia Bernardinetti. by Craig Keita, Becky Morosco, Rick Bunn, and Jack Bunn. She is a member of the varsity softball team, learned lead nerds, and National Honor Society, as well as serving as vice president of the class of 2022. Lauren has maintained a 4.0 GPA throughout high school and plans to attend Ohio University to major in secondary education and minor in photography. That's Lauren Bunn. Next we have Georgia Seely. Georgia is escorted by Austin Franklin and Scott and Wendy Seely. She is captain of the girls basketball team and treasurer of the class of 2022 and has published a poem and a book of student poetry. Georgia has maintained a 4.0 GPA throughout high school, and she plans to attend college out of state. Georgia Seely. Our 2021 homecoming Escorted by Chris Diarello and Chris and Lydia Cavetta. Lily is class president, culture club president, captain of the volleyball team, a member of the golf team along with student council, National Honor Society, and Lake County Youth Council. Upon graduation, Lily will receive an associate of science degree through Lakeland Community College, and she plans on majoring in biomedical engineering at either the University of Cincinnati or the University of Louisville. That's our 2021 homecoming queen runner-up, Juliana Cavetta. Our 2021 Wycliffe High School homecoming queen is Emily Kreisner. Emily is escorted by Mackay Powell, Ken and Trisha Krisner. She is a member of the cross country and track and field team, along with student council, learn lead third, and National Honor Society, where she served as treasurer, as well as acting as the 2021 Wickless Swing Band drum major. Emily plans to pursue a career in the medical field as a pediatric surgeon or oncologist, or in the legal field as a trial attorney. This is your 2021 Wycliffe High School homecoming queen, Emily Krisner. So there you have it. There you have it. The homecoming court of 2021. And, uh, I, you know, it, it's funny, Frank, because earlier this week I thought 
Doggone, is this homecoming week? It's just yeah. with this whole doggone it's, thing going on, it's normally this place would be packed, and I would ha I would uh, hazard a guess that probably half the city doesn't even realize it is a homecoming. Yeah, I, I don't even know if they had the parade because, you, you, no, I'm, oh, it's ne next Wednesday? Because in the past, in the parade, um, you know, the official live steam railroad of the Wycliffe Blue Devils always had right. a locomotive, you know, and the, and the Blue Devil caboose in, in the parade, and right. I hadn't heard anything, so... You know, it's just a crazy, crazy time. It is a crazy time. But let's put now, all that aside. Now, I, let me mention, time, let me mention, you did you notice that the background music was from our era? Yeah, right. <laughs> and the band, conducted it, by our homecoming queen and well, major I don't know. Christmas, Maybe enter Sandman or <laughs> something just, just wasn't good. After which we ask that you please remain standing for the Wickland High School alma mater. There you have it, the uh, Wycliffe High School alma mater. I can never hear that enough, as uh, also the, the colors presented. Mark, I know we're coming up on football here in about 13 minutes. I understand you had a chance to uh, chat with uh, Lutheran West head coach Perella. John Perella, Coach Perella, good guy. You know, we've been doing this for a long time, and I even mentioned it in the interview and talked to him yesterday on the phone, but this is the first time we ever had a chance to talk with a coach who was a former NFL player, a longtime NFL player. Yeah, I, I, I read the bio on him. He, uh, great, I mean, uh, the things I read about him were very good, aside from being a player, as a motivational person, very cool. Very, very great guy, very open guy about his team. Um, wants to get the best out of all of his guys. Um, and, uh, you know, it's funny because he... I, I was over there actually on the sidelines as he was admonishing uh, a couple of people over there. But like I said, stern but fair. Um, you know, he come, I, I, I have a very, very good sense that this is a very, very well coached and disciplined team. I have a feeling you're right. And, and, and I guess we're, and not, not that Mars and the Wycliffe coaches are not, um, but I mean, it's, it's rare when I get to really talk to a visiting team and and get to really go in depth with the coach. And he was very, very gracious with his time. And, um, you know, I, I almost like to think I gained a friend, but it's really great to talk with Coach Perella. And uh, 
Uh, we, we had a chance to talk with him here on the field just a little bit ago. Well, back at home here with the Blue Devils against the Lutheran West Longhorns this evening. And beautiful weather. Great night for football here in the city of Wycliffe in the center of the universe, 44092. We are with head coach of the Longhorns, John Perella. Coach Perella, welcome to Wycliffe. Oh, thank you. Thank you. You know, Coach, it, I, I told you this on the phone we spoke yesterday. We've been doing, I've been doing this our 17th season and uh, never had a chance to talk to uh, a coach who actually played at all levels, NFL, college, high school. Um, first of all, welcome. Second of all, and I asked you this yesterday, and I thought it was a very interesting answer, so I wanted to ask you again. Parallels between, you know, the high school level, the pro level, um, you know, what are the parallels? Because um, I thought your answer was very, very interesting. No, thank you. No, I you know, I say the NFL guys are just high school kids. They're just bigger. You know, it's the truth. They're just big kids. And uh, it's the speed factor is completely different, too. And, and also, I think small guys in high school can compete uh, versus you get to the high college or NFL. I think, uh, you know, size does matter. I mean, you get guys that are 300 pounds can run like running backs in high school level. So, uh, you know, I think high school is still the purest game. I think it's a great opportunity to teach life lessons and uh, really show uh, boys how to become great men because we really believe that. Who you're at home is the same person you are in the classroom and try sending, you know, transcending education is the same thing on the field. So, you know, if we can help build great men at home, uh, we seem to find that they become better players. Awesome. Great answer. Um, let's get to the game. So um, there will be, a, I think, a good number of Lutheran West fans watching and listening this evening, but the Wycliffe fans who will be watching tonight, uh, what can we expect from the Longhorns? What kind of team are you, and how do you expect to play the Blue Devils? You know, we're just, we're, we're honestly a team just trying to get better every week you know, with the new staff here, and, and uh, an extremely young team, and uh, we, we've got some great talented players, and just young, and I'm just trying to uh, learn our system and learn how we how we play each and every week, but you know, we're, uh, we try to be physical every week and try to win the running game, both running, running the ball and stopping the ball. So when you see the Blue Devils on tape, mm -hmm. uh, young group, mm -hmm. um, good week of practice, you told me yesterday. Uh, w what are you looking to do um, as a team to try to stop the Blue Devils both offensively and defensively? Yeah, obviously, I, you know, I was telling you on the phone that uh, I don't think their record is indicative of the kind of team they are. Uh, you know, they've, I think they've played well. They just haven't won in the win-loss column. And, and, uh, so. Uh, hopefully that can continue for at least one more night, right? So, uh, you know, I think it's a <laughs> right. good football team. They run the ball well. They play uh, uh, a lot of guys get to the football every down. Their special teams is pretty good. So we're uh, we're in for a true challenge tonight. It's just try to get better in all three phases. Let's talk about your team on the offensive side of the ball. You mentioned uh, Jack, your quarterback, mm -hmm. um, and Manny, your running back, and and your other players. Talk about who we can. Who you know? Who are we going to hear a lot about? Who's going to have the ball tonight? You know, what numbers? What names are we going to hear? Yeah, you know, I mean, it's it's truly a little bit of uh, by committee. I mean, we have a, a good running back and a great running back in Eddie Lewis and, and uh, Jamarian Banks, and uh, you know, Jack LaPointe has the ability to run and throw as well. So, uh, you know, we'll mix it up with those guys. We've got a couple good receivers uh, that are young that haven't played a lot that uh, that we'll probably get in the game tonight and see what they can do. They're young and quick, uh, but we're you know we're just trying to get better. You know, we're not about Hey, look at me! Look at me! It's it's more look at us. Uh, try to improve every single week, and, and uh, uh, we love our team and uh, you know uh, and everything they do and how they prepare and how hard they work. Uh, you know the challenge always is is uh, forget that it's just football and uh, <laughs> life lessons are learned every day and every week and. and uh, you know, we just really believe if we just go out and get better every week, greatness will happen at some point for us. So your defense, um, just like any other high school team, a lot of guys going both ways. Um, let's talk about, you know, the guys up front. I always like to talk about the guys up front mm -hmm. um, and, and on the linebackers and so forth. What kind of defense do you play? Um, and mm -hmm. talk a little bit about your defense. Yeah, well, we're, we're, we're blessed that we don't do that. We have, uh, uh, you know, two of our defensive linemen don't play any offense at all. Uh, oh, nice. And the third one, uh, who's uh, not playing tonight, a uh, little banged up, he's not going to play now. He's can play in an emergency situation. Uh, he doesn't play offense as well. So three of our four guys don't play any offense oh, at all. So, okay. uh, so we've got another guy who's not going to play much offense tonight. He's going to play defense. Uh, uh, so we're excited to, uh, to see him go because he's big, strong, and fast. And we haven't seen him play much defense. And he's actually really good at it. So that's all we love. Uh, so, uh, you know, the greatest thing in our defense is we normally have eight, nine, ten guys at the football. Uh, I think that makes us a good tackling team. And, and uh, if that prevails tonight, then It'll be a fun night. If not, then it's going to be a long night. <laughs> Last one for me, Coach. You have a couple of freshmen mm -hmm. on your team that start, mm -hmm. and one of them had a game ball from Cleveland.com last week. Mm -hmm. um, 
Talk about these two young guys because they sound like they're exciting players and you're going to have them for the next three years as well. Yeah, we actually start uh, five freshmen on defense for tonight. Uh, blessed with them, blessed with youth that can run and are kids that are really just want to be uh, great men first and guys that are honoring the Lord and, and uh, you know, kids that really have a dream about how they want to prepare and things they want to do in their life. And, and uh, it's just great to have uh, an opportunity to coach them. You know, it's both our corners are freshmen. Uh, we have a very capable, uh, good junior that plays receiver, so he can start there. Uh, he goes in every once in a while just because he's really good at it, and uh, it's nice to sub him in just to keep his, you know, keep him happy because he loves playing corner. But you know, we're not in to try to do everything we can not to have guys pull, play both ways because it wears them out so much, especially in the long season. So uh, the Aquarius Bradley and, and Keywon Reed are two of our young guys that are just, uh, uh, I think, special would be the word for them. Uh, young defensive lineman. Marion Gill has had uh, four sacks last week. And, uh, you know, a passing team, they, they got behind and they started really throwing a lot. And he just said, hey, you had one of those nights. And, and uh, I think the game's going to be a little different tonight. I mean, it's a hard note. It's you know, a winning team, team that, that really wants to establish their own game. So uh, it'll be a good test for him to see how he can handle and stand up to the run. All right. Yeah. Coach Prowler, thanks so much. It's been a yeah. pleasure no, talking to you. Good pleasure. luck. Thank good you. luck. Thank good you. luck. Good luck. Yeah. Okay. And Coach John Prella of the um, Lutheran West Longhorns. And, again, it was just a pleasure to talk with him yesterday and today. And I'll tell you what, he really, really into his team. Um, and he's a first-year coach over there. He was an assistant volunteer last year for the Longhorns. Um, his son played on the team last year. And, uh, you know, he uh, coached at the high school level, went to Oregon State to coach the defensive line, and then decided to come back to high school, moved to Cleveland, um, brought his family here. His son, again, graduated last year, and uh, he's, they're just excited to be here, and it was, a, it was a joy talking with him. On the other side of the ball, the Wicklow Blue Devils, um, second game in a row, had not, did not have a chance to speak with Coach Mars Purcello, and I did have a chance. I was up here at practice on Tuesday, um, and uh, Bobby Plum is back. Bobby is going to be playing this evening. They really, really need him back, and they're looking forward to having him back onto the field. And it was just a kind of a disappointed week last week and not being able to play because they had a really, really good week of practice, according to Coach. And um, uh, But they did have a good week of practice, and it was interesting watching a practice. Coach Knack and Coach Sharp and uh, uh, how they got involved and, and actually how Mars conducts a practice. It's been a couple of years since I had a chance. So it was great to come up, um, visit with the guys, visit with the team, and um, I think they're ready for this evening. They're anxious as heck to play. And uh, they are going to play a very, very good Longhorn team, and we're about to hear it and see it in just a few moments. And, you know, Mark, hopefully that pent-up aggression will come out in a positive way. You know, it's like you haven't played two weeks. You know, aches and pains hopefully are subsided or, sure. you know, healed. And be good to have Bobby Plum back uh, because we saw him do some amazing things last season. So um, we'll see what happens. So we're about uh, a little under four minutes uh, to kick off. So I, I think, Mark, I'll talk about the defensive unit for Lutheran West. And if you want to sure. uh, do the offense for the Blue Devils, and then it'll be time for Blue Devil football here in a beautiful 69 degrees here. Dop Doppler Devil weather radar shows not a cloud in the sky. And once again, I do not see that Goodyear blimp. But in any case... The Lutheran West Longhorn defense will be starting, will be number five, Greg Fuentes, as um, also number eight, Emmanuel Diaz, number 11, Dominic Capretta, number 14, Elijah Burns, number 20, Dequarius Bradley, number 22, Jamarian Banks. Number 27, Jojo Ravenel. Number 30, Kelwan Reed. And rounding out the defense, number 55 on the defensive line, Roderick Phillips. He'll up, be up there with number 71, Richard Ludke. Or probably Luck, sorry. And last but not least, number 89, Demarion Gill. And that's the defensive starting lineup for the Lutheran West Longhorns. And for your starting lineup for the Wicklow Blue Devils, offensive side of the ball, we start out number one, quarterback Sean Durgansky is a junior. Number six is Vince Gargiulo as a running back. Number nine, E.J. Mester, who's just been a tough, 
tough kid. Uh, 5'8", 140 pounds, but every bit of that uh, tough kid. Number 21, Jude Devaney. Devaney? Devaney? Devaney, Jude Devaney is a wide receiver. Number 33, Bobby Plum, that sophomore, back as a running back for your Blue Devils. Number 42 is Thomas Wentz. Thomas continues to play um, for your Blue Devils. And I'm not sure if we're going to see Thomas in the backfield. Now that Bobby's back, he might be on the offensive line. Number 57 is Patrick Quinn. He's an offensive lineman, 6 feet, 170 pounds. Number 64, Kevin McCabe, senior offensive lineman. Number 72, Blake Promozik, and I'm with my brother back and forth here with the starting lineup. Like in stereo. <laughs> Number 75 is Mitchell Lindsay, and I know Mitch's mom very, very well. Watch her grow up. He's a sophomore and offensive lineman, 6'6", 320 pounds. And number 79 rounding out is Noah Garrison, a junior, 6'5", 315 pounds. And, of course, Coach, Coach Marsh Purcello and the rest of the Wycliffe Blue Devils. And the Devils are making their way out on the field. Tonight they'll be in their blue jerseys, blue pants as they knock down the uh, banner, those golden helmets, and the uh, Longhorns across the field will be in their white jerseys with red numerals, black pants, red helmets, dark red helmets. And uh, we'll see, Mark, I think tonight will be a good test. You know, the Longhorns are coming in here, good record. Um, you know, the one... Uh, I think for a few minutes they stayed in it with uh, the Kirtland Hornets, but who does, <laughs> you, you know? <laughs> right. But uh, we'll see what the Devils are capable of doing tonight as, um, you know, they want to try to get one back into the win column, but it'll be a challenge up against this talented Longhorn team from the west side of uh, Cleveland, actually Rocky River. Right. And, you know, it was funny. As I said earlier, I just didn't have a chance to get uh, any tape on Mars. Uh, Coach Purcello, because um, he and the staff has really been focused this week because they were so disappointed last week. Um, he was actually out there. He was uh, catching throws from uh, quarterback Sean and uh, practicing rollouts, practicing the long ball, uh, left and right, coaching up his young quarterback. And uh, like I said, uh, uh, it, it, Mars is driven. Coach Purcello is driven, and he was ex especially driven this evening uh, prepping for the Longhorns, so we we'll see what happens. Well, and, and you know, the other thing too, Mark, the Blue Devils are rebuilding, you know, so as we've talked... Young team. Yeah, it's a young team, and if this year, if we're able to see improvement from week to week, you know, that's that's the thing right. that we want to see happen. So, it looks like uh, the Devils are going to kick off uh, back deep for um, the Longhorns. It looks like number 22 who's Jamarian Banks, and number 20, which is Dequarius Bradley. Teeing it up is number 56, Noah Tellisman. We're about ready to get underway. We're glad to have you with us here on YouTube Live, as well as Facebook Live, here on the Worldwide Blue Devil Network. The Wickla Blue Devils hosting the Lutheran West Longhorns. As uh, we get a little end-over-end -end pooch kick's going to get fielded, there, we're gonna, looks like by number 16. I think it was number 18, Kelly Conaway, who grabbed that one, Frank. Uh, you are correct, Mark, as uh, he gets it out to about the Lutheran West. Looks like they're going to mark it somewhere at about the, just outside the 35-yard line where Bobby Plum did bring him down. Right, at, right into the game already. First play of the game, Bobby's right in the game, made the tackle on uh, Conaway there, and we'll see what happens. Uh, quarterback for the Lutheran West Longhorns is uh, Jack LaPointe, and uh, Jack Sr. headed to the U.S. Military Academy next year, and he's under center. Yeah, they start uh, with a running play over left tackle, and it looks like still on his feet there. Nice run there. We'll get a number here there for you. That's number seven, Eddie Lewis as uh, Lewis was able to get a nice gain on the play of about eight out over about the, just between the 43 and 44 yard line. It will be second and two for the Longhorns. Running off tackle for eight yards there for Lewis, and he had a big game last week as well against Vermillion. Quarterback up under center in an I formation. Again, Lewis over 
that left side, he's got the first down. He's out over the 40. Um, he's out to about the 48 yard line where it'll be a new set of downs for the Longhorns. And Vince Gargiulo brought him down right there, first down. So it'll be first and 10 for the Longhorns, ball at their own 48 yard line as the first couple of plays, they're working that left side of the Wycliffe defense. And um, could be one of those things where student body left until you stop it and they go student body right. They've got a split backfield as a uh, quarterback looking to throw. He sets, he's throwing, he's got a long one and uh, overthrows number eight, which was um, Emmanuel Diaz. And um, Jack LaPointe, he, he had the time. He rolled there to the right side and he had, he had Diaz wide open down at about the 25 yard line. He just overthrew it. So it'll bring up a second and 10 for the Longhorns. Just underway. Thank you for being with us tonight on the World Wide Web, the World Wide Blue Devil Network. As this time the Longhorns, they said one wide left, two wide right. They've got one in the slot, a split backfield. Quarterback LaPointe looks like he's going to be it on a keeper and a nice pursuit there. There's Bobby Plum. Bobby Plum goes in there and LaPointe. I thought he, Mark, I thought he was going to pitch it back on the option. Well, well I think it was a run pass. Op, I, mean, I think run, you're right. Run pass option or, or just an option, I should say. And I'm kind of surprised he did not flip it back to Diaz. And it was a loss on that play of one. Move it back to the uh, setup third and long, third and 11. The ball is at the Lutheran West 47 yard line. As uh, LaPointe. As the quarterback there, Jack LaPointe, goes over to the sideline to get the play from their head coach, Perella. A huge offensive line there for the Longhorns. They've, now we've got a whistle, a timeout being taken, I believe. I think it took a little bit of time, and they, time, the clock was running down a bit, and I believe Coach Perella called a timeout to get his guys together and getting him back on the same page. Mark, while we have a moment, I want to make mention, I got word from Wycliffe High School. They've set up a, Go, a GoFundMe account. Uh, they want to create a brand new elective class called Stage Light Circuit. Right. And um, it's going to be very cool for students that want to get into, you know, possibly pursue entertainment, you know, appreciate entertainment. Uh, in doing this, uh, students will be able to attend nine to ten shows, a couple of which will be Broadway performances. Uh, they're looking to raise, I believe, about $10,000. So uh, if you check out a um, GoFundMe. Um, and we'll have that up on the uh, alumni Facebook page um, by this evening. Great. Um, where people can click on the link and donate to the GoFundMe page. Great. Um, if they would like and read all about uh, what Mindy Hotchkiss is putting together. Well, a, a full house backfield mark, and uh, Lewis takes the pitch, and he's off to the races. 20-10-5, touchdown, Lutheran West. So that's how they dial in a, uh, you know, the Devils had him back on a third and 11, and um, Mark, I don't think Came, well, anyone I think touched him. I don't either. And, you know, number 70, Patrick Levesque, a sophomore, He's uh, huge. 299-pound left tackle, and everything pretty much was to his side on this drive. And, uh, and you know, Lewis was just able to take it. And, again, as Frank said, nobody even touched him, took it right to the house. The point is going to do the hold, and uh, the snap is back. The kick is up, and it was off to the left, no good, as the uh, uh, point after was tried by Bryce Grope. So with 940... To go here in the first quarter, your score, Lutheran West 6, and the Blue Devils have uh, yet to take possession of the football. But, Mark, I, you know, when they had them third and 11, I thought, you know, just at least contain them. Right. But, they, you know, Lutheran West has seen something on the left side there, and Lewis, um, he just took off and he was gone. You know, as nice as Coach Perella is, I was trying to egg him on and especially on the phone yesterday and asking him what, you know, what did you see with the Blue Devils, any uh, areas of opportunity. But, of course, um, 
you know, him being, a, of course, a former NFL player, college player, and so forth. Uh, he kept everything close to the vest, and, uh, you know, it's pretty one of these things where, well, we're just going to have to wait and see how they're going to attack the Blue Devils, and we're, and we're seeing it now. Well, we did see it, Mark. So back deep for Wycliffe. Uh, we've got, uh, let's see, in a single back at about the 10-yard line, it looks like. Looks Gargiulo is back at about the 10 as um, Bryce Grope has it teed up. Devils, when they have the ball, will be moving from right to left on your screens. A high end over end kick is going to get fielded there at about the 15-yard line. As uh, the ball is out on the right, ball is pops out right into the hands of number 14, uh, who is Elijah Burns, who basically caught it in stride and ran right into the end zone for a touchdown. And I think that was was that number 45, Gavin. Wow. Oh. I, 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 I'm wondering, I, I thought on a kickoff, are you able to... Well, it didn't uh, even touch the ground. It just popped right into his hands. I, I, I'm wondering, are you allowed to advance the ball on a fumble on a kickoff? Well, it didn't touch the ground. Oh, well, in but any I, case... But I think you're right. Um, I, 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 but it didn't touch the ground. Well, there's nobody making any motions from the Wycliffe sideline, so obviously what happened is... What can happen as uh, Lutheran West is going to come out. They set up in a full house backfield for the two-point conversion. Lewis on the handoff. He's going to be Denied. brought down shy of the goal line, so the point after is no good. So with uh, 9.32 to go in the first quarter and in no time flat, it's Lutheran West 12, and uh, your Blue Devils have yet to really have the football on offense yet. You know, Frank, I'm kind of surprised that Coach Perella didn't use that left side again for that two-point conversion. Instead, he went on the right side between the center and the guard, yep. and the Blue Devils were able to bottle him up and stop him before um, he was able to get across. Good news for those, for our guys. 12-0, uh, though, for the Longhorns, and uh, the offensive hasn't, hasn't even touched the ball yet, and here it is, uh, 12 to nothing. So number 33, Bobby Plum going back. Number 6 is Vince Gargiulo, and Sean Durgantz back for the Blue Devils. So uh, um, who fielded that kickoff on the fumble? Because I couldn't catch a number. I, I don't think it was Bobby Plum. Oh, It was Plum. Plum is the one that fielded wow. that. Wow. Well, Grope has it teed up at the 40. We'll hopefully see what happens on this one. A high end over end kick. Again, it's going to be Plum. He gets it at about the 17 as uh, he's going to get out over the 25 to about the 29-yard line where um, it'll be first and 10 Wycliffe, and this will be their first possession. Eli Banks, number 14, I believe, was the person that on the tackle there of Plum. So here we go with the Wycliffe offense, and uh, it'll be interesting to see what coach is going to do. Um, they were really practicing all week various, at least on Tuesday, various plays. They weren't really concentrating on any one thing. Uh, so it will be interesting to see. And since we didn't have a chance to talk with Coach before the game, uh, what the Blue Devils are going to do here on this first series. Well, Dergantz is in the shotgun, and it looks like he's got Plum set up in the eye right behind him. Uh, and it, Dergantz looking to throw, and he's going to get dropped uh, for a... Massive loss all the way back to the Wycliffe 17-yard line, and Mark Lutheran West wasn't fooled. It was Demarion Gill. Um, you know, he's another freshman, uh, 6'3", 200 pounds, that uh, Coach talked about. Uh, talked about him yesterday. He had four sacks last week against Vermillion. And uh, is picking up right where he left off last week here in Wycliffe. So there was a loss of about 11 on that play. It's going to be second and 21 as uh, Lutheran West looking like they want to bring pressure no matter what. Snap. It uh, handoff to looks like Metzger who tries to get over left guard. I think it was a Gargiulo. 
No, I think it was Metzger, number nine, Mark. As uh, be no gain on that play. So it's going to bring up third and 21. The ball is sitting just about, about the 18-yard line. They've got to get to the 40 for a first down. Devils shifting a little bit on the right side. Now we're going to... Mars is going to call a timeout. We've got a timeout being taken by the Wicklow Blue Devils here. So with uh, 8.03 to go here in the first quarter, um, it's been a tough start here for the Blue Devils. Uh, score uh, Lutheran West 12, uh, the Blue Devils nothing. And, um, you know, Mark, these are the times where, you know, you can see just the few times we've seen Lutheran West on defense and o- on offense they look like a o- well-oiled machine. You know, on defense, they're moving quick. And the Devils, you know, you get that little hesitancy. Even for just a fraction of a second, it can blow up a play. And, and you know, again, a young team, the Blue Devils are, and just not as experienced and as the um, um, Longhorns are. Coach did say they were a young team, but I'll tell you what. Uh, a lot of their core players are upperclassmen, junior and seniors, and... Um, the young guys are just stepping up, I think, with that senior leadership over there on that side of the ball. But uh, third and long, we'll see what the Devils dial up here. Obvious passing situation, but... Yeah, the Devils, they've got um, one wide to the left, one wide to the right. Plum is in a slot to the right side. Longhorns have a lot of guys up near the line of scrimmage, so you got to figure there's going to be pressure on Gantz. And he waited to the last minute, I think, the wick of coaches to call that play based on how the Longhorns are set up. Dragantz in the shotgun, and he's going to try to take off on his own, and he's basically going to get corralled in the backfield. So three plays, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Eli basic, Burns. He, basically, the Blue Devils were going the wrong way. So this is going to be fourth and forever, as it'll be uh, spotted at the 14-yard line. Going back in punt formation is number 56, Noah Talisman. And he's standing right on the goal line. Back deep for um, Lutheran West is uh, number 22, Jamarian Banks. And number 20, Dequarius Bradley. Longhorns are going to get the ball in good field possession. The, the kick is blocked. It's uh, bobbled, being bobbled. Oh, and he touched it. It should be the Blue Devils, Blue Devils ball, right? Yeah, but Mark, the, the deal is you got to get it, and um, you have to make a first down. So it's going to be basically first and goal for um, it'll be first and goal for the. Longhorns at the Wycliffe five-yard line. Uh, once the block happens, I guess. No, the deal is, yeah, once it happens. Yeah. Now, had it gone in an right. area where it was beyond the right. first down marker and Wycliffe recovered it, then it'd be first down right. Wycliffe. Right, right, right. But um, not when you've got, like, first and forever. So this time uh, the Longhorns are sending two wide to the left side, one wide right, two guys in the backfield. They hand it to number 22, who is um, Jamarian Banks. And uh, he it looks like, did he make it in the end zone? I don't see a signal. Okay. Touchdown, Lutheran West. I didn't see a signal either, Frank. And I think Scott, just like we always saw him, end up in the end zone, but there was no signal from the referees. And they're going to try for two points again here on this one. So it's seven minutes to go in the first quarter. Uh, this one's um, wobbling rather quickly as they set up in a full house backfield. A pitch. There you go. Banks on the left side. we got a late flag coming in. Banks got into the end zone. You might have a hold. Yeah, probably. Yep. It's going to be a hold on... Lutheran West, so that'll back them up, and they'll be trying the point after or the points after once again here, except they'll be backed up by 10 yards. Body language by number 74, Richard Luque, for the Longhorns. Kind of tip that off. You know, Mark, the Longhorns, if they've 
don't have a long memory. You remember last year when we opened the season over there, right. that game was over in the first quarter, but the other way. Right. <laughs> so there's probably some players. Um, I actually watched that game this week, and what we did last year on that, because we were so senior top-heavy, we were able to substitute really, really fast and keep right. their defense on the field, right. which enabled us, the Blue Devils, to uh, to score as many times as we did. Timeout. Whoop. Off. Delay a game. Now that's crazy. On the point after, we, <laughs> I was at the Brookside game where they were taking five minutes after a touchdown right. and no call. Right. So, okay, it'll be they've got it at the twenty-yard line as um, La, the quarterback Lapointe's looking to throw. He fires into the end zone and he completes it for a two-point conversion to number eight. Emmanuel Diaz, it was wide open in the end zone, but now what? What do we? Legal man downfield. Yeah, Mark, you got it. Illegal man. You know what the devil should do is line everybody up at the goal line. I, you, you know what I mean? It's like just you, you don't want to let them in the in the end zone, but you know so, it's funny. I thought I saw the I saw I thought I saw the right tackle. Uh, downfield a little bit on that one as LaPointe rolled right. And another coaching Mark, moment. Mark, now, now they're going to try it from a placement where this will be 42 LaPointe yards. is right. He's back at the 32. The snap is back. The kick is up. It's long enough. And it's good. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that uh, <laughs> That's an interesting turn of events. So. I think, that, Frank, of all these years we've been doing this, I think that's the most point-after attempts we've seen in one series. I, I, I have to agree with you, Mark. So with seven minutes to go in the first quarter, your score is Lutheran West 19 and the Wicklow Blue Devils nothing. And it would be nice to see the Blue Devils get in the end zone at some point tonight because it's the last time they got into the end zone was in the win over East Tech, which was week right. number two. right. So back deep for Wycliffe, we got Bobby Plum along with uh, Gargiulo and uh, Durgantz. Grope, who just nailed a 42-yard, imagine that, a 42-yard extra point. That's even longer than in the pros. You know, it's funny. I'm guessing at 5'11", 152 pounds, he's a soccer player. I would think so. (laughs) I would think so. So he's, he's got it teed up. A basically line drive that's bobbled and goes out of bounds. I think Bobby Plum touched it. He did. So um, basically, the Blue Devils. Boy, I'll tell you what. That you know that's a mental mistake because the ball was on the ground looked like it was going out of bounds, and right. even if it would have went into the end zone, it would have came out to the twenty. You just don't touch those. Right. And it would have been a penalty going out of bounds as it ended up. Um, and they would have had the ball a little bit closer to midfield. But as it is now, the Blue Devils are going to start at about the 13-yard line, first and 10. I want to thank Tony Throckmorton, who right now is manning the camera, and he'll be on the, on the mic here in the second half. As the Devils set up, they've got two wide to the left side. Snap is back as um, Durgantz tries it on a keeper and basically tries to get over left guard, and he's met by a host. Um, Get you a number here, I think. Number 27, Jojo Ravenel, I believe, was there. Demarion Gill was there. So no gain on that play. It'll be second and 10, Wycliffe. Ball at their own 13-yard line as um, play being signaled in from the sideline. Durgantz is in a shotgun formation. Looks like he's got Thomas Wentz in the backfield with him. Snap. Durgantz looking to throw. He sets. He fires. He completes it to Gargiulo out to about the 15-yard line. As... um, 
And you had that defensive lineman, number 77, Oliver Lowe, 6'3", 220, just covering him out of the backfield and making the tackle. Mark, look at their defensive line. Big guys. I mean, this is a large team from uh, Rocky River. Got to hand it to them. So this will be third down, seven to go for Wycliffe. They stay in the, look, we got movement. And that time that was uh, low. Breaking so that'll that benefit the Devils by five yards, make it a bit more manageable, make it third and two. Very doable. Ball now is out at the 21-yard line as Lutheran West was caught off sides. They've got Bobby Plum in the slot on the right side. Wentz is to the right of Durgantz. The snap is back. Durgantz is going to keep it. Go up forward. Looks like he's going to be close to first down. He didn't get it. Where the headlinesman's going, he's saying fourth down. He missed it by about a half a yard. As Fuentes was there to bring him down, it's going to... Make it fourth and um, sh- now. Wait a minute. No, they did. I thought he got the first down. Well, the headlines. I Mark. I saw it. I you but, know. But the headlinesman uh, was you're right. Was on the other side and he had his fist. Mark, I'm, I, I saw it. I'm, I'm with you. I, you know, made no sense. But what are you going to do? First and ten. Wycliffe. Their first first down tonight. Ball is now at the 23. Now we got. Now what? I tell you, these guys sure love their whistles. What's going to be, what's going on here? We got a flag and what? And they're moving it back on Wycliffe. This has been a false start. False start on the Blue Devils. So from first and 10 at the 23, it'll be first and 15 back at their own 18 yard line. Again, they stay in that same set. Durgantz in the shotgun. The snap is back. They give it to Gargiulo. A, Gargiulo, who goes wide to the right side. He gets out over the 20, almost to the 21. You know what? I Boy, boy Vince doesn't stop. I mean, he had that corner, but he, he just hesitated for a second. And this Longhorn team is fast, and they yes. were able to Yep, they to cover a lot down. of ground very quickly. Pick up a three on the play. Second down and 12. So second and 12 for Wycliffe. Ball is at the 21-yard line. This time they've got, uh, looks like Metzger is uh, in the slot to the left side. The snap is back. Durgantz is under pressure, and he's going to get nailed back at about the 10-yard line. Marion Gill once again. That, I believe, is his second sack of the quarter of the game. He once again had four last week against Vermillion. And, and the thing is, Mark, I think Durgantz is looking at the onrushers as compared to getting out of the way and trying to find a man downfield. So once again, it's going to be third and um, it's going to be third and 23 for Wycliffe. Ball back at the 10-yard line, and this one's getting to be a bit goofy rather quickly, ladies and gentlemen. Here on Homecoming 2021 from Wycliffe Memorial Field on a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Friday night. As uh, Gargiulo is in the eye right behind Durgantz. The snap is back. They give it to Gargiulo right up the middle, and the Longhorns, Mark, were not going to be fooled at all. As uh, five, no, five guys on the tackle. I mean, no they, gain on the play. They were across that line before he had the ball. So this time, Noah Talisman is setting up in the Wycliffe end zone. Back at about the Wycliffe 35. I think that's Burns. See if the Devils can. Now we got a timeout and what? Man, these Mark, we they they just got Wycliffe, I think, for a false start. False start. I mean, come on, guys. I mean, how bad was it? Right. It's, it's a come on. <laughs> well, now Talisman is 
standing at the back of the end zone. The snap, he gets the kick off a beautiful punt. It's going to get fielded there by Burns at the uh, 20. We got flags coming in as uh, Burns is still on his feet. He's going to get brought down at about the Wycliffe 27-yard line. Yeah, block in the back, but I didn't see it. Mark, I think we've got one of these ticky-tack crews tonight. I'm sorry, that was Bradley on the return. My apologies. So they've got a, a block in the back on Lutheran West. Flag is back at about the 37, so they'll mark this one off out to the Wycliffe 48-yard line where it'll be first and 10. I don't believe the Longhorns have started on their side of the 50 on an offensive drive yet this game. I think you're right, Mark. So it'll be first and 10 Lutheran West as uh, this time they send two wide to the left side, one wide right. They're in an I formation. They give it to Lewis, the talented running back, who is still on his feet. He's got a first down and more as um, he gets down to about the Wycliffe 32-yard line. He went over the left tackle. Number 57 for the Blue Devils, Patrick Quinn, was able to bring him down finally. As uh, we're just down to about a minute to go here in the first quarter, 19-0 Lutheran West. Once again, they're in an I formation. Quarterback up under center. A pitch to Lewis. He's going wide to the left side. He's still on his feet. He's going to be brought down at about the 20-yard line. And Gargiulo with Bobby Plum on the assist, bringing him down there. They were the last two line of defense that were able to bring Lewis down. And I'll tell you, when you get your defensive backs as the first point of contact, um, it's going to be a long night. Um, this line, these linebackers need to start really, really containing this run. Well, not, not only that, Mark, but the offensive line for um, Lutheran West is opening up. I mean, they look like East Wind uh, blowing through those holes. Right. They're in a the handoff again to Lewis on the left side. He's 15, 10, 5, touchdown as... Um, as the Longhorns are opening it up quickly. And I thought Lewis was going to actually trip over his left guard's ankle as he was going over the left side, able to maintain his balance, and I believe he went in untouched. So with seven seconds to go here in the first quarter, this one's getting out of hand rather quickly. As we'll see, are they going to try a two-pointer there? They're going for two. I know. La, La, well, the point's in anyway. He's the holder, but I don't see the kicker in. I believe. Yeah, Mark. I think you're right. I think they're going for two. Yep. As uh, Longhorns split two wide left, one wide right. Two backs in the backfield. La Point up under center. He's going to keep it himself and dive into the end zone for the two-point conversion. So with seven seconds to go here in the first quarter, the score is uh, Lutheran West 27, uh, Wycliffe 0. Even still, you know, it's homecoming 2021. want to congratulate once again the um, Grand Marshal Bryant Murphy and your homecoming queen Emmy Krisner. Um, on their accomplishments insofar as homecoming. Always a fun weekend, you know, Wycliffe High School, really any high school, but, you know, for our memories, homecoming was always exceptionally special. You know, Frank, I, before they tee this up real quick, I'll tell you, I had a chance to come up here Tuesday. Um, I had some alumni business to go through and was able to wander the halls, and it had been quite a few years since I was able to do that. And I was able to, I found my locker in my senior year. I, I found the class you and I had a speech in up on yep. the second floor yep. and it was Mr. just like Mr. A, Penrod you know 40 some years ago it was just like it, it all came back yep. in, in a flash it was I, it was wonderful I, I I fully agree buddy well Grope's got it teed up he's got a basically a ground ball fielded there by uh, Durgantz at about the 15 he's still on his feet 
Breaks a number of tackles out over the 30. Nice. Still on his feet. Nice return by Durgantz out over to the 40-yard line where the Devils will have their best field position of the night as that'll come to an end of the first quarter. And um, K1 Reed, number 30, was finally the Longhorn able to bring him down. But finally, some decent field position for the Blue Devils as we start another series here. And that is the end of the first quarter. With your score now 27 for the Longhorns, nothing for your Blue Devils, but the Blue Devils have the ball. Great field position as they start their third series of the game. You know, I could kind of quickly continue the story as I was walking the halls with Terry Shine, uh, one of our alumni folks, and the curator and uh, the keeper of everything alumni. I remembered going through, as we came up to the break area, there's this little garden area, I don't even know what people call it, in between room 111 and between the place where we used to hang out in the gym. And I remember- It class, was a student court. This student court. And I remember the year you graduated that everybody always did something to the statue out there that used to be there. It's no longer there. But I remember coming in as a junior in your senior year and seeing the top of a Volkswagen yep. over the top I, of this. <laughs> I know who did that. I bet you do. <laughs> it was a number of football players. So we're about ready to get started. Quarter number two as it'll be uh, Wycliffe have their best field position of the night. They'll have it first and 10 on their own 41-yard line. Durgant's in that shotgun formation that we're, and uh, the Longhorns bring in the house. And, and, uh, and you know, Frank, the, Mark, you could see it. Well, well, but here's the thing. The exchange between the center and the quarterback, we saw it from week one on, just is not there. Sean had to actually bend down, yep. look down, and grab the ball, and then look up. And by that time, there were five guys there. There were five guys there. Yep. They just have to work that exchange between the center and the quarterback out. I, I, I think instead of wind sprints at the end of practice, you do that 100 times. Yep. And the other thing is, too, is you got to block. I mean, they're just letting them through like, a, you know, like spaghetti through a colander. So it'll be second and 15, ball back at the 35. A handoff to, I, I believe that's, uh, yeah, Thomas Wentz as he gets out over the 35 to about the 39-yard line. As uh, Gill was there on the tackle for the Longhorns. If you're clicked in from Lutheran West, welcome to uh, Wycliffe Memorial Stadium. Your Longhorns are sitting pretty 27-0 here with um, 10.50 to go here in the first half. Beautiful, beautiful fall night here at Wycliffe Memorial Field. As uh, now be third and 11 for Wycliffe as Durgantz looking over at the sideline. Play being signaled in. Wentz is to the left side of Durgantz. Snap is back. The rush is on, and he's going to get brought down all the way back at about the Wycliffe 29-yard line. And again, Mark, Durgantz is looking at the onrushers as compared to trying to find a man downfield. For Demarion Gill coming off that left end, I mean, he was, I don't even think he was touched. I mean, if you're an offensive lineman, fall down in front of these people. I mean, they're not even, there's, they're not, there's no barrier at all between them and the quarterback. Well, Bradley and Burns are back for the Longhorns. They're going to be set up once again with great field position. Snap is back. High end over end kick. It's going to get fielded there by Bradley and brought down immediately. Great pursuit and tackle there by the Blue Devils. Nice punt. Nice high great punt. Great high. The great hang time. Yep, yep. Had the As it, uh, Bobby Plum was down there to bring him down, and it'll be first and 10 for the Longhorns. At their, Mark will be the first time they'll have the ball in their own territory. It'll be first and 10 at uh, Lutheran West on their own 43-yard line. Nice, nice play by special teams right there. Once again, at halftime, we will step aside. You'll be able to enjoy the uh, Wycliffe Swing Band. And, you know, last year there was a band at Lutheran West, but... Mark, I see, I, I see something going on behind their, um, the grandstand there. I think there, there may be a, a band. I believe, I believe it is. 
So on a keeper, we've got LaPointe. I thought he was going to um, pitch it on the option, but he goes on the left side as uh, Quinn was in there on the tackle. But I think we have a flag on the play. We have a hold. Oh, this is a personal foul of chop block. So this is going to be um, a 15-yarder from the, I think, the spot of the foul. It's going to back, back the Longhorns up to the, basically all the way back to their 28-yard line. They, they'll have to get to the Wycliffe 47 for a first down. It'll be first and 25. So they set up basically in a two-back set. LaPointe under the under center. He sets, he fires, he's looking long. He's got a man open, and he's going to overthrow him at about the Wycliffe 35. And he was looking there for, I believe, I think he was looking for Diaz. He was. And Diaz, Mark, he was, Diaz was wide open. You know, I had, I, I did have a chance to talk to Coach uh, Mars uh, on Tuesday.
fourth down and they're up 48 nothing. I don't get it. There's another coach here in Lake County that used to do that, and we weren't very happy with him. I'm not very happy now with him. I understand, Mark. I want to apologize, everybody. I just saw a note here. Um, had a little technical glitch. Audio is now back. And so with um, 40 seconds to go here in the first half, makes the score um, Lutheran West 55. Hmm. Well, at least, one, at least one item of accomplishment here tonight. We are able to, on our Worldwide Blue Devil Network, we've got Tony Throckmorton, who's a student at Wycliffe High School who's working with us. Tony's, uh, we'll, he'll, I'm going to hand over the headset to him in the second half. He'll do the play-by-play -play with Mark in the second half, and I'll swap um, duties with him as Gropey has it teed up. High end over end kick is going to get fielded. Gargiulo just goes down Gargiulo, at about the 19, I, it, it, 20. Looks like he caught it at about the 20. And went right down at the 20. No. So. I'm sorry, that was Mester. That was E.J. Mester, number nine. I, I got my sixes and nines mixed up there. Sorry. So clock running. We're see if the um, if the Blue Devils will allow this clock to run out mercifully, and I think they are going to. As the officials are walking away with the football, the clock is still running. Folks, I'm trying to get an idea what is going on here. Have they, Mark, have they just they're called? Just, they're just going to halftime. And there you have it, folks. Um, not a very pretty first half here. Um, for the Blue Devils as uh, Lutheran West um, has kind of had their way with Wycliffe, 55-0. I'm going to step away. Tony Throckmorton will join you with Mark in the second half, and uh, we'll see if the Devils are able to at least try to make something exciting to happen. In the meantime, I'm going to step aside as um, I will catch up with all of you for the last home game of the season. Next week it will be... Uh, Mark, Scott, and Tony. Oh, no, Mark and Scott. Tony's actually in a bowling tournament down in Columbus. Uh, best of luck to you. Uh, but we're going to step aside as you'll be entertained by the marching band from Lutheran West and then your hometown Wycliffe High School swing band. So it, um, enjoy homecoming 2021, everybody.
here at Wickham Memorial Stadium where sadly your Blue Devils are on the short end of this 55 to nothing against the uh, and, and very, very good Longhorn team from Lutheran West, Lutheran West High School uh, over in Rocky River. Good evening everybody, welcome back. Mark Tennant here along with my pal Tony Throckmorton uh, and we're going to be doing the play-by-play -play for you here in the second half, Frank's taking a break. Camera guy, scoreboard guy, and blame him if you see anything wrong. Tony, <laughs> this first half, you know, and these are your classmates. It had to be a kind of a bit of a shock as it was to me. Uh, it was all very much a shock throughout this first half. Um, just seeing how uh, Lutheran West's offensive only been attacking the left side of our defense and to the air of our defense it's just seeming like we need to just clear the heads of everybody and get ready for anything that's coming forward ready for next week for this next game uh, this is something that it's it was really unexpected yeah yeah well certainly it was unexpected for me i kind of thought it'd be a little bit more 
a little bit more competitive. But, you know, I mean, from, from the first, you know, from the opening kickoff where, um, you know, Bobby Plum, you know, uh, when the Blue Devils, I shouldn't say the opening kickoff, when the Blue Devils got their kickoff after they had given up that touchdown, um, Bobby Plum, I believe it was Bobby Plum, was, you know, fumbled the ball right into the arms of the uh, of the Longhorns, and they were able to take it right in. The ball didn't even touch the ground, and before we knew it, it was 12-0 uh, Longhorns, and it continued from there. Um, so, I mean, you know these kids, and, you know, you've grow, grown up with them and so forth. What, you know... Uh, are they a resilient bunch? What do you? What's your thoughts on what they're going to be doing for the second half and, and, and how they're going to react and come back and, and play? Well, off of uh, what I think in the second half that we're going to see is a lot more of um, more running out of us and giving it to Thomas. Now with we don't know what Bobby's status is with after seeing the injury that he got. Um, but I've grown up. I've been here since my seventh grade year. I've known a lot of these kids. Um, but I want to say this real quick about Thomas. Once Thomas gets a little little ticked off, I don't want to be in his way through anyone. Talking about Thomas Wentz. Oh, yes. <laughs> Thomas is no one to be messing with when he is mad ticked off with anything. So we'll, we'll, we'll look forward to that, and we do need a little bit of madness out of the, uh, out of the blue levels here in the second half. 55 um, nothing to start the third quarter, and if you're just joining us, welcome. If you're from Lutheran West and a Longhorn fan, welcome. Thanks so much for tuning in here on the Worldwide Blue Devil, ne blue Devil Network. We're happy to have you, and uh, if you're not familiar with high school football, when in the second half, when an opposing team is up by 30 or more, we have the running clock. And that means that the clock will continue to run, even on, even on uh, uh, incomplete passes. And the only time it really, really will stop is when a runner goes out of bounds. Any time the clock will really stop is at an official timeout, a team timeout, or an injury timeout. And similar to what it was like when we were down against uh, Kenmore a few weeks back, they've set the quarter game clock to eight-minute quarters instead of 12. Um, so we're starting with eight minutes here in the third quarter, and the Longhorns are getting ready to tee it up. Grochi's ready to tee it up for the Longhorns, and I'm going to turn it over to my buddy Tony Throckmorton for the play-by-play -play of the second half. And we are off on the second half. Uh, good kick, uh, but it was going to go out out of bounds in yep flag kicking it out of bounds off the kickoff so that will put the devils at, i believe the 20 if not more um now we need to see what this wickliffe blue devils offense is going to look like now at the start of the second half yeah and if they can just and, and, and the problem since week one really has been the center and the quarterback just not on the same page with the snap uh, many times, Sean Durgantz, the quarterback, number one for Wycliffe, had to actually bend down, take his eyes off the defensive line just to get the ball that was hiked. And by that time, that big defensive front from the Longhorns were in the backfield, and it spelled trouble. And hopefully they'll be able to get that worked out here in the yes. second half. That's what I think I noticed when I was up here uh, versus uh, Ken, uh, the Golden Rams from our folks down in Akron. Um, it was the same thing with Sean uh, having to bend down, take his eyes off everybody, and then pick up the ball, and then there, right where the defenders. All right, we have Sean in the shotgun, snaps the ball, hand off to Thomas Wentz, up the middle, runs over someone, up to about the 40-yard line. Five-yard run there for Thomas Wentz, and on the tackle. That's number 88, Eric Willard was able to get up in there with number 75 in, as well. That's Jeremiah Parker. We can see that the Longhorns are starting their second team now. I don't think any of their starters are in on defense right now. I don't believe so, and I think you are completely correct about that. Is Sean Otto willing to tell the lineman a different play? Sean with the handoff to Thomas to the left side, and I think he's got enough for a first down Blue Devils. Uh, on the tackle, I believe that it was number three, uh, Ben Cruz. Ben Cruz for the Longhorns. So that's going to be a good enough for a first down for the Devils. I think now in the backfield. Now back into the backfield is Vincent Gargiulo. 
Hopefully we can just keep running the ball just like how we just were just now. Hand, hand off to Vincent. Runs over someone again and about out to the 50, 49, 50 yard line. Uh, on the tackle there, I think it was number 54, which is, uh, I don't see a name for 54. 28 Ray Castro is in there as well. Yeah, you'll have that sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> welcome, I've noticed Welcome that. to our world. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the Blue Devils are back out. They're going to keep going with the same same play a little bit, uh, maybe move it around as we see Vincent moves up to Sean's right hip. Blue Devils at midfield, snap of the ball. Vincent bounces to the outside, goes out to the 45, 46. Oh, no, 45, 44. It's my bad right there. For a first down for the Blue Devils. Number 44. Uh. Torres and Vangelos on the tackle. I thought I saw some, number 40 in there as well. Okay, here we go. So as of right now, uh, we got Vincent back on Sean's right hip. Uh, probably going back with the run play to the same. Oh, Sean keeps it, goes to the right side. Third, gets to the 30, hurdles, 25, 20. 15, 10, 5, touchdown, Blue Devils. There we go. There we go. Yeah, they were the, that young defense for the Longhorns there. I think they were just, con, you know, they were just the keying on uh, Gargiulo and just thinking he was just going to continue to get the ball. And it's nice fake, nice run by that was Sean. a very great play there. Very, very nice, nice read by Sean there, too. And probably had the option, right, of yeah. being able to hand it off or just take off himself. Made a good choice with that. And we have Colin Casey out for the extra point. EJ Mester on the hold. That place and kick, and it is good. Colin Casey with an extra point. And I believe, oh, and they're on, the band's on break. We're going to hear oh. the fight song. <laughs> Just as good. <laughs> I thought we were going to, I thought we were going to, yeah, able to find the end zone pretty quickly on a nice drive put together by Coach Brasello and Coach Sharp and the rest of this coaching staff there. I, you know, I, Frank it, Tony, I should say, <laughs> uh, you know, they were able to come out fast. There's some good communication, it looked like, between the center and the, uh, and Sean Durgans, the quarterback. And uh, we'll see what happens here with the Lu Lutheran West uh, Longhorns here in the second half. I'd imagine they're going to be playing their second team offense. And uh, hopefully the Blue Devils will continue to make this a game and yeah. make this a half. Hey, there's still a lot of football left. A lot of football board. left, yeah. What? Uh oh. We're now getting, what? Getting ready to line up. Griffin West called the timeout. We should be kicking off, but there was a timeout called by Luthen West. And we've got the spirit crowd down here. Oh yeah, I think they're fun. I think that's what I've been waiting for all day right now, <laughs> is to see them get happy and start jumping up and down. Uh, Bobby Plum on crutches, and uh, yeah, I didn't think he was going to come back based on 
I mean, they had to, they had to, they had to tape that up. Yeah. He'd have had me getting paid lots of money to be able to come back from that, and I'm not sure a professional guy would have came back from that. No. That looked pretty bad. And, uh, and I think of what I saw, it was the same ankle that he yeah. injured. I, it, yeah, I'm sure it is. I'm sure it is. All right, well, now we are back, and Noah Talsman is off to kick off the ball. A little squib out to the out to the thirty uh, no, thirty one where the kick was placed, and there was a flag for kicking the ball out of bounds. And they'll move that up to the thirty five. I believe so, thirty five, thirty six yard line. See the official standing on the thirty five. So since the ball went out of bounds. And once again, folks, we're reminding you it's a running clock, 3.49 to go here in the third quarter, plus we only have eight-minute quarters for this half to finish up the game, 55-7, to seven, so it will not be a shutout. And the Blue Devils were able to get up on the board. Uh, seems number five is in for the game, which is they're still their... Uh, Starting quarterback in, in the game. No, Fuentes. Greg, Greg Fuentes is quarterback now. He's the backup. Uh, we are holding on uh, Lutheran West uh, back at the line. Alex Vangelo's the ball carrier. There was holding, I believe, on number 75, which was Jeremiah Parker. Boy, I'll tell you what. This group, I know it's okay it's against them, but, boy, this group, I just, I mean, you can call a holding on every play, right? I mean, that's the way football is, and yes. they're doing it. <laughs> they they are doing. You know, you do get to outside, once you're outside the tackle, and you're out kind of there in space, and they see that. They'll call that every time, no matter what the level is. Well, let's see if Wycliffe can now stop them and keep them from getting back there. <laughs> As Luther Rush sets up under center. Same play, pitch outside to number 21. That's Vangelos. Vangelos and number 23, Davion Irvin on the tackle for Wycliffe. You know, we have not heard his number or name much this year. Um, I'm not sure if he earned his way into the starting lineup or did is he playing a position by somebody that, who is hurt? Is he? I think that uh, off of what I've seen, especially at the start of this game, they were staying away from his side of the defense. They were always going to the left, and Davion's always on the right side of the defense. We just, Frank and I, we just has not called his name much at all this year, if at all, Davion. Davion Irvin. So far, he's having a decent game for the Blue Devils. He's had a couple tackles today. I've seen uh, another pitch out to the other side, and uh, number 21 gets... Runs over. Uh, oh, gosh. Sorry for the stutter. But uh, <laughs> ball. It's Vangelo's again. Yeah, Vangelo's out to the 49-50 yard line. Mester, I believe, is in on the tackle there. Yes. I'll tell you what. For a kid that's 5'8", 140 pounds, sticks his nose in there, and it's just a hard-nosed football player. Really, really enjoy watching him play. He's, he doesn't give up on any type of football play. Right. Any sport he plays, he does not want to give up on, even like if it's like this. The way it is, is he's just always like this. He never gives up, always gives 100% every game, That's every awesome. practice. It's great. Ball on the 48-yard line of Wycliffe. There's snap, outside pitch again. And that's number 22, and I think that is still, that's still, wait. I still there's Vangelos again. Alex yeah. Vangelos Alex Vangelos again. back on the carry. Uh, Seems like they're just going with the same play, just going back and forth. We're just going to keep pitching the ball for them. Well, it seems to me they're probably going to do that until it stops working. <laughs> right. You are right about that one. This will be the last play of the third quarter. Yep. They might not even get this Four. play off. Three, two, nope, and that is the third quarter, folks. And at the end of three quarters of play here this evening, the 
So the end of three quarters here at Wickham Memorial Field, 55 to seven in favor of the Longhorns of Lutheran West. And eight more minutes of football to go here. Homecoming 2021, glad you're with us. Thanks so much for joining us here on the Worldwide Blue Devil Network. Mark Tennant along with my partner, Tony Throckmorton and Frank Foti on camera. And, uh, and cheering in the background. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, there we go. There's your fight song. Do you ever really think of that you really get busy, dizzy sometimes, always spinning <laughs> for that long? There we go. It was good to hear the fight song. Yep. And just think we've been listening to that fight song for over 50 years, young man. <laughs> I've only been listening to it for about five years. You know, the Blue Devils used to play down behind the middle school, which was called the junior high back in the day. That was before this field was even built. Yeah. And that's where, uh, that's where we cut our teeth on Wicker Blue Devil football as kids. What was it, Mills Field? That field was always known as Mills Field. Yeah, yeah. That's where we played in Midget League. And eighth grade football, ninth grade football. Yeah, um, Midget Football. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, Lutheran rest on a second and five, starting the fourth quarter off with another pitch out to the left side of the field. That's number nine on the carry, which is, uh, doesn't have a name. <laughs> Emmanuel Diaz. Oh, I'm sorry. You're right. I, 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 that was an eight. Uh, yeah, we have no idea. Yeah, welcome to our world. So what we call somebody that doesn't have a name to a number, we call him Baba O'Reilly. Baba O'Reilly. That's their name. So Baba O'Reilly <laughs> was able to. <laughs> Tony's going, what the hell? Is <laughs> these old men. <laughs> oh, you guys are fine. <laughs> Luther Russ sets up under center. Well, about to be under center. And the point is back in the game, isn't he? Is 6-6 six, six the quarterback? Oh, that's still no. number five with a fumble on the play. Number 21 grabs on and recovers it. I'm sorry, Fuentes. My bad. These 64-year-old eyes. And we, once again, want to remind you of this running clock. 6.09 to go in the game here. Tony, did you know, are, are the Blue Devils playing any JV games this year? Uh, I believe, yeah, I believe we do. And that's always the Saturday morning of, uh, after a game. I know there was a couple here, and I've gone to them. Um, so we're going to play their JV team tomorrow, then? Probably. Uh, as Luther Russ pitches out again to the right side this time and gets stopped at the line of scrimmage by number 65, which is Chris Sathers, a freshman. And Vince Gargiulo. Vangelo's again. On the carry for the Longhorns. Yep. And I see Wycliffe has put in number 40, Montreal Barnon, senior. Uh, and he's new to the school system, Yes, right? he moved here in July, and I actually work with him, and I got to really know him, and he is a really nice kid. And actually, Lutheran Rust was his old school. Oh, and Wow. So he was really pumped for this game to play. <laughs> they run it to number 21, which is still Vangelos. And on the tackle, I'm trying to see into the pile. Uh, Davion was in there. Uh, Noel Garrison, I believe, was in there. Yep. And it's going to be fourth down. Fourth down and 19.
Well, we'd like to remind you, well, going back to action here, get you here in a second. Fourth down for the Longhorns. As they're going for it, and they're rolling out with their quarterback and gets about tackled at the, about a yard back of the line or on the line of scrimmage, which is going to bring Wycliffe Blue Devils offense back out onto the field. We'll be back here at home next week uh, where it's going to be Tony, Mark, and Scott. I will not be here. Oh, so it'll be just, <laughs> it will be you it'll and... Be, it'll be Mark and Scott then bringing you all the play-by-play -play yep. next week here on the Worldwide Blue Devil Network. Hope you can join us. Always a fun time this time of year. High atop the ridge in the center of the football universe, 44092. As the Wycliffe Blue Devils come back out onto the field. As they put EJ Mesker at, in at quarterback to get him some reps. Hand off to number six, which is Vincent Gargiulo. And I believe that was number 75, Jeremiah Parker for Luthen Rest on the tackle. Maybe. Still have EJ back in at quarterback. We have Sean out to the left. Over his head. Uh, over his head. And he just falls on it. Smart, smart idea to just fall on the ball. You know, it seems like, maybe just because he's a smaller guy, it seems like everything is much faster when Mester is at quarterback. Everything just seems to kind of move a lot quicker than when Durgan's at quarterback. And he looks like he's coming to the sidelines to talk with Coach Priscello. He lost, lost a lot of audio. He lost audio. I lost it. Hello. Okay. Well, we just lost the monitor in our ears. We're good. There we go. Yep, there we go. We have Wycliffe back on the ball. EJ, and I believe that's Vincent back to his ball back over his head, falls on the ball. And with a minute 30 left in the fourth quarter, Wycliffe is now, it is now fourth down and a long one. Yeah, fourth and a mile. Mester back in at quarterback. And Jurgans is coming here to the near side as a wide receiver. Looks like Luthen Russ is bringing the pressure. Hand off to Vincent Gargiulo, who's going to get tackled for going to rush, but there's going to be a turnover on downs. Number 15, Dylan Dennis in on the, on the quarterback for the Longhorns. And I'm not even sure we're going to get this play off. No, I don't think so. With 30 seconds here left at Wycliffe High, which I think we're just letting the game clock run out. I believe they are because yep. they're not even putting the field on. Uh, they're not even putting the team on the field, I should say. Yep. Lutheran Rest is already ready to line up as Wycliffe is coming to do that now. Well, it looks like it's going to be the corner. Well, the bright side, we won the second half. Yes. 7 nothing. <laughs> we won the second half 7 nothing. <laughs> but the final score is going to be the Lutheran West Longhorns 55, your Blue Devils 7. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Uh, it was great, Tony. Thank you, sir. I guess we'll see yep. you here in about three weeks then. Uh, most likely, yes. Uh, I'll be down in Columbus next weekend for a PBA Juniors event. Uh, top four out of uh, the U18 boys division go down to Jupiter, Florida to bowl for a national spot on television for the PBA Juniors event. So how do you 
I mean, do you do you just go down to Palisades and just throw and practice? Is that how you do? it? Well, what is your I d- routine? So basically, with, well, with the work schedule, it's been a little different. I've barely been able to go into the uh, alley, but tomorrow I'm going into the alley to get a little practice in, and then. Um, so uh, my routine is I go into the bowling alley. I bowl for about two and a half hours of practicing on uh, stabilizing my body and not moving a lot of important stuff, working on my mechanics. Um, but through everything with bowling, um, it's taught me a lesson with my, uh, with my mental game because when I was younger, I used to really get on myself. I, then I would start bowling really badly. Um, but now that I've grown up a little bit and I've finally learned of how to calm down after bowling a quick bad game, um, I've bowled a lot better. I've been bowling bigger tournaments. Um, I think uh, soon I'm going to start going to campus visits at some bowling schools like Notre Dame and Euclid. Um, uh, my dream right now is to go to Wichita State University at, in Wichita, Kansas. They are the top. When you think of football, college football, you think of Ohio State, right? the powerhouse. And then you got basketball, you got Duke and Kentucky. Yep. Wichita State is the, uh, the Duke, Kentucky, Ohio State of bowling throughout the NCAA. Well, good luck to you. Good luck in the tournament. And uh, you have to tell us when you come back here. We've seen in a few weeks how, yep. how it went. Thank you for listening all out there, the Lutheran West gang uh, from Rocky River. Thank you so much. We really appreciate you tuning in here to the Worldwide Blue Devil Network. And, of course, all of the Blue Devil alumni out there, thank you so much. The Wycliffe Blue Devil football games are brought to you by the Wycliffe Alumni Association, and we are happy to bring them to you. We will be back here next week. 6.30 6.30 is pregame, 7 o'clock kickoff as uh, the Wick of Blue Devils will be back on the field, and we hope you are with us. And until then, Tony Throckmorton with Mark Tennant saying, and Frank Fody saying thank you so much. And as Mr. Joe Tate once said, have a good night, everybody.